this little hike might be over. This right here is what's called a hairpin turn. Five miles an hour. You think that's ridiculous, but you wait. There's a guy walking, of course. This is one of my favorite sections of road all anywhere. This is just so beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? Even through the dirty windshield, I forgot to wash it. I literally am only going maybe 10 miles an hour. It's not even registering hardly at all on my speedometer. <laughs> it just looks faster in the camera because of the <laughs> width of the road and drop-offs and this is the kind of road that you don't want to be on in a fire because for obvious reasons I mean look around plus fire trucks getting down here And you trying to, you know, get out with your horses. People down here, for some reason, I don't know why, people down here have horses that they have to tow trailers. I mean, yeah, it's beautiful country. It's great horse country, except in a fire, getting out of town. Isn't that a pretty little tree just parked right there all by itself? The little green one, isn't it pretty? There's not a soul behind me, so I'm not worried about <laughs> stopping traffic. There's quite a few trails down here that I've been on that uh, are shorter trails, and they're pretty scenic, but right now two of them are closed because of landslides and washouts, so I can't go on those. But this other one that I'm going heading toward I'm choosing not to, to say the name of it just because it gets overrun by people who are stupid and don't follow the rules and ruin things. And when we get there, you'll see why I don't necessarily want to advertise. It's already a really well-known trail. I mean, it's not like I'm hiding any secrets or anything. Oh, look, here's a waterfall. Oh, wow, there's another beautiful one over there that's not usually there. Well, for some reason, my audio went out on my phone, but I'm taking you down these stairs and kind of mentioning that sometimes it's harder to go down these stairs than it is to go up or down a straight hill. But we are coming on one of my favorite sections of the river. But before we get there, we come across these butterflies that are really common around this section of the river. Well, actually, the whole river this time of year. I think that orange one is called a Hoffman's checker point because those are real common around here. And those little blue ones, you can't really see them very well, but they're blue, kind of silver. And I think those are the ones that are called silvery blue, which is kind of an accurate name for those little things. Then this river is, I don't know if I said this already, North Fork of the American River. And since we've had all this rain and all this snow, it is just running really fast, really deep, and really cold. Really, really cold. I put my hand in it, and it's like snow cold. Because that's what it is, right? But I so wished you could have heard it, because it just sounded so wonderful. It was just so beautiful there. This is one of my favorite places on the river. Up there, I'm just kind of pointing to where there's a couple more trails up and behind the parking lot. I'll, I'll take you down. I'll take you over to them in just a few minutes. But isn't that beautiful? I wish you could hear it. It's so clear, so clear, and so cold. And then last time I was here, the, some dingbat had put hot pink paint all over that rock. And there was at the time there was a bunch of trash, but the trash got picked up. The paint is still there, unfortunately. But look how clear that is. 
I don't know how deep it is exactly, but you know, I think in this general section, it's like, you know, four or five feet deep or something like that. I didn't go in to test it, but man, look at that view. It's gorgeous. Up here, I'm just kind of taking you up here to this um, little structure thing that I finally figured out what I think it is. And the other times that I've been here, I, I really was confused. It's like this thing. It's like, is it a structure? Like an old, you know, mining thing or what? Because it has concrete on it. And, I, and because it's got concrete on it, it makes me think it's like early 1900s. But I think I figured it out just when I was editing this. I think it's like a retaining wall of some kind because there was a lot of those retaining walls that were built, uh, especially in this area. I didn't go all the way around the corner because it isn't. it just kind of stops and then goes along the other ridge. So I think it's a retaining wall. But it's old. It's definitely old. And, of course, I have to pick up slate, rocks of all kinds. I love I love uh, rocks. In case you hadn't noticed, I love rocks. And this, this one rock, as I was talking about, you know, somebody handled that to put it there. Who was it? How long ago was it? How did they pick that rock to go there? You know, all those important questions of life. And then here, I'm just kind of pointing to this other trail that's up here that I'm not going to say the name of either. But it's got this little waterfall that comes down the side. The last time I was here, it was just a mere trickle, and you could just walk across the rocks to the other side. But it's really flowing nice now, and it really sounded so pretty. I just wish you could hear it. I'm so irritated that my microphone came unplugged. Just enough. It came unplugged just enough so it wouldn't record. And it happened several times during this trip because there's other parts that I'm going to have to do a narration on. But I'm just talking about like the head of the uh, the head of the waterfall and this trail. And the farther you go up this trail, you have to literally crawl on your hands and knees, actually, which is kind of funny. Then what you'll see by the end of this video, you'll understand why that's funny when I say that. Um, and I was kind of pointing to this this rock you see that triangle looking big huge rock over there like right in the middle of the screen it's just kind of perched there on a couple of smaller little rocks but one tiny little move in the wrong direction and uh, that thing would go over and look at that waterfall isn't that pretty wiggle wiggle next five miles straight up look there's a squirrely it's a ground squirrely he went right in the hole <laughs> he knew i was coming Again, there's nobody behind me. Oh my gosh, look at that. Can you see that waterfall over there? Nobody's behind me and nobody's coming. Wow, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You can see a lot of uh, rocks on the road from the hillside washing away when we had all that rain. We have more rain actually coming tomorrow, which is why I was conveniently off today. I wasn't planning to be off today, but there was nothing to do at the shop, so here I am. So I thought, well, I'm going to go for a hike. And since I have my fancy schmancy California State Parks Pass, I'm going to use it. All I have to Again, I lost my audio, but I finally made it to the trailhead. This is a little ways down the trail. I was getting past the bees. There's a lot of bees in this one section for some reason, but anyway. I was just pointing about how beautiful it is in this section. And actually, my audio comes back in the next clip, so good. Look at all these trees that have been knocked down from the wind and the rain, and hopefully they all stay up there while I'm walking. This trail is only two miles long, but it's a hard two miles. See, this is... Ooh. Buzzards are out. They know I'm. They know I'm walking. This has got a lot of up and downs, rocky trail, but believe me, when we get to the destination, it's worth it. The view is totally worth it. This is a really popular trail. 
but I'm not going to say the name of it again. Enough people already know about it to ruin it. So on the weekends, you can't even find a parking place. Okay, this might be... This, this is not the view we're going for. This is another spectacular view. Not pretty. Down there, in the bottom of the river, North Fork of the American River. Look how steep those canyon walls are. I love it here. Okay, back on the trail. Back on the trail. We're going back down here. I got some people behind me, thank goodness. But they're not really going the rest of the way, they said. But this is a nice... Uh, my legs are already shaking. I just had to stop for and do supervision on my phone in the middle of the canyon, which was kind of an interesting experience. So, yeah. I can't see a thing in this phone. It's completely black. These little flowers right here, I understand, are called rusty popcorn flowers. Although, I don't know why they're called rusty popcorn. It doesn't look rusty to me. But, I'm going to keep going. This is what you'd call a single track trail. See how narrow it is? And one false step and away you go. I kind of like that I have a group of people behind me now. <laughs> There's like one, two, three, four, four or five little women. One of them's local and the other ones are visiting. Two of them are... Uh, from out of the country, because they are some kind of Spanish, or maybe uh, Portuguese, I can't tell. One of the, the, the local lady that's with this group of women behind me just fractured her ankle recently, and now she's on this trail. And I know once she gets down here, she's going to have to stop and let them go forward to see the main attraction of this trail. I'm not using the stick, although I do have it. I'm just carrying this. Actually, let me move this out of the way. They're going to step on that and slide down the hill. There. The North Fork of the American River right there. And that we see that waterfall over there. Can you see the, where is it in the camera, right there? You can see the waterfall coming down over there from way up there. Oh yeah, as you probably can hear the ladies behind me. Uh, so let's just keep going, shall we? You gotta kind of pay attention on this trail because you can go over the side really easy, especially at me, because I trip so easily. I clip a rock and go whoop forward, and you got to be careful not to go whoop forward. Trust me, it's worth it. This is the section for the next little stretch that is killer steep. On the knees going down, and on the thighs coming up. I'm intimately acquainted with several of these rocks because I have sat there on the way back up, catching my breath. We are at about 2,500 feet or so in elevation. Not too high, but they have had snow uh, recently in these storms. But as you can see, it's all melted off now. Isn't that gorgeous? Again, I can't see squat in the phone, so I'm just pointing. We just came, we just came down that little hill. We're going to keep going down this hill. Trust me, it's worth it. I don't hear the little ladies, so I wonder if they bailed or they're taking pictures of flowers or something. Hopefully they didn't bail because I'd hate to think of them coming on this trail this far and then not coming down to see the main attraction. Ooh. 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 Nice and uh, steep here. 
Ow, 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 ow. That felt good. I didn't really fall. I leaned too far. Yeah, they're gonna... They're gonna follow, so that's good. I have my stick with me today, my walking stick. Can you see it? I'll show you the my secret rocking my secret of my walking stick when we get down there or when we get back. It depends. Okay, th this trail has the same kind of hairpin turns that the road does getting down here. My car hates to come down here. Well, not down the trail, but down the road. And uh, it really doesn't like going back up. So I'm going to turn you off for a second because this is getting slippery. And I don't want to land on my butt and break the phone. Well, wait a minute. Oh, well, I did it. All that yammering and I still did it. Never mind. Oh, that tree went down. That's a new one. <laughs> Probably can hear them pretty well, but. They're funny little ladies. <laughs> I'm glad they're here. They're respectful of the flowers and the trail. You're gonna have to go under that tree. Last time I was here, that tree was not there like that. It done broke off. Oof. I don't think I'm in any, any particular danger of it collapsing on me, but. It's a bit of a wash. Bit of a washout right there. <laughs> They're saying it's a good workout on the way down. <laughs> they haven't gone back up yet. Oh, there we go. I don't have a clue what's being recorded, if anything's being recorded, or how it's being recorded, because I can't see anything and I'm just holding this, just carrying it. I have my first aid kit with me, as I always do. So when one of us slides down, either me or them, <laughs> I already kind of mashed my hand when I leaned into that rock. That wasn't fun, but it's okay. It's not bleeding. It's just scuffed. It's just a flesh wound. See, more hairpin turns. It's breezy today, but it's not windy like it was the other day when I was at Folsom Lake. Oh man, that was bad. Down here in the canyon, it does get breezy just because you're in a canyon. And the water just, or the water, the wind just comes whistling down the canyon. But... Yeah, I love it here. This is... This is one of my favorite trails, and man, do I feel it. <laughs> this is the kind of trail that you want to share with somebody. And since nobody ever wants to go hiking with me, <laughs> I have to do it with you on the phone. Or a camera, I guess, would be. But believe me, when you see this main attraction, when we get down there, You'll go, wow, I'd really like to go see that trail. It's a season sensitive trail, means meaning that, look, there's a full grown stumbling block tree in the middle of the trail. Season sensitive, meaning that certain seasons you get a better view than other seasons. So you have a very short window of opportunity to get here to see what I call the main attraction. And this is the time of year. It's the last week of March. And this will be this will go for another month or so. And then it will be done. But look at that view. Look at how steep those hills are. I'm pretty sure this video is not the greatest, but hopefully it comes out somewhat. This is another little brutal section coming down and then coming back up. 
So again, I'm intimately acquainted with several of these rocks around here, that one in particular. <laughs> and then there's another one down there. Because coming back up is a bugger. Going down isn't fun either, because it's too slippery. I always take mincing steps. <laughs> Look, somebody dissolved and left their shirt behind. Either that, the uh, mountain lions are getting hip. Okay, see. So now we get to go down here, down there, and then up there and around. So let's go. I'm going to turn you off for a minute. So this is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Okay, little old ladies, keep coming. I don't want to lay here for very long. Okay, I felt a nice big pop. It was a loud pop. And I don't think it's gonna unpop. So, this little hike might be over for the season. So you won't get to see the main attraction. Right now, I am the main attraction because I think I broke my ankle. Yep, I am laying down flat on a hillside with a not happy ankle. I mean, really not happy ankle. Now I have to try and get up. This. I slid and one leg went forward and the other one went backward and when it went backward, the knee and the ankle went in opposite directions. Yeah, I'm excited. Where are those little old ladies? They need to come down here so they can help me up. I'll be back later. <sighs> okay, well, I was down the hill a ways and I called my nephew and his girlfriend and they are going to come because they live about mm, 15 miles away or so. So they're going to come and haul my Lord butt off this trail and drive my car down to the hospital with me in it to get my ankle looked at. I have never broken a bone in my lifetime. I have fractured a thumb and a little finger, but it was hairline fractures, but I am pretty damn sure that this ankle is not happy. It's not, I can't put weight on it and something's moving in there that shouldn't be moving. So we'll see what they say. I hope my insurance covers it. I'm crawling actually up the hill because I, I want to make it as close to them as I can so they don't have to come down as far. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know what happened to the little old ladies that were behind me. I think they turned around and went back, of course, just because I needed them to come upon me. There's two or three other cars out in the parking lot of people that are further down the trail. I have yet to see them or hear them. So they're probably way down there enjoying themselves. And it irritates me because I was like around the corner from the main attraction that I was wanting to show you. And I wasn't even distracted by the phone when I slid. There's a lot of loose leaves and rocks and I stepped wrong and went whoosh. Luckily, I just slid down to the next level. I didn't slide all the way down the hill into the river. So that's good. But I'm crawling and my hands and my knees are not happy. But this is a new adventurous video, isn't it? Yay! Anything for views, right? No, just kidding. Just kidding. I did not do this on purpose. So, yeah, I'll keep you updated. So stay tuned. Again, my audio went out, which is not surprising considering what I've just done. And I, again, I want to reiterate, I was not distracted by the phone. It was in my pocket. And I did not do this on purpose. Despite everything that I had said previously as I was coming down the hill, which was really prophetic actually and it's frightening when I look back at it but I'm showing you the view like well at least you know I got a nice view it's a nice day it was beautiful that day perfect temperature for hiking 
And earlier I said I called my nephew, but I actually had sent him a text, which right there is miraculous because you don't get really good reception in the canyon, and especially where I had fallen, you just don't get reception there. And that was the only place, actually, on this trail that we were able to get a message to go out because I tried to text him again a couple of times when I was crawling, literally crawling on my hands and knees, and those messages didn't go out. But the one I needed to go out went out. Well, I'm still crawling, but I made it back to the tree, the downed tree. My rescuers are on their way. It's been about half an hour I've been crawling. Um, so hopefully they will be here soon and hobble me out of here and drive my car down to the nearest hospital so I can get my ankle looked at. So not how I planned the day. I should have just stayed home. Oh, well, that gets me out of vacuuming, right? Maybe. So, yeah, I'm going to keep crawling, but I had to take a break because my hands and my knees are not happy. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to send my rescuers a message and let them know how far I've gotten so they know how far down the trail then they need to come, and uh, I'll get back to you. My rescuers are here coming down the hill, so I will get back to you and let you know how this turns out. Well, it's now 4.30. I'm finally down at the nearest hospital in Auburn waiting for my wheelchair to arrive. Let me just say that I am lightheaded and fuzzy and in a lot of pain. So my my rescuer went in to get the wheelchair, so I'll be back. Well, here I sit in ER, just had x-rays done, waiting for the doctor to come out and tell me what's wrong with my ankle. You wanna see it? Here it is. It's not supposed to look like that. It's got an owie. So we're gonna go Wait for the doctor to come. So guess what? I broke my ankle. Surprise, surprise, huh? Well, I got booted out of the hospital, quite literally. They threw a boot on, and they gave me a prescription for ibuprofen and sent me on my merry way. And yes, my foot still hurts, and my knees are throbbing because they are raw. But it's fun, right? An adventure, always. So I guess I'll talk to you later, but I'm not sure about what. <laughs> but come back.